My name is Jasmine Sanchez. I'm a runner and overall lover for the outdoors. Um, I'm also the founder of a company called Vessel Athletics. And then I'm recently joined as a community lead of the Writing Industry Diversity Coalition. I'm also, I'm 23 years old and I, uh, based in the Bay Area, I've grown up in California and Northern California. And uh, I'm also uh, Latinx, Mexican-American. Were you quite sporty and quite outdoorsy? Was your family quite outdoorsy and sporty, you know, when you were growing up? So I grew up in, in Northern California, so it's always a little chillier than, than Southern California. But um, what's amazing about Northern California is just how, how much accessibility and trails there are to just to mountains and just a lot of different beautiful places you can go hiking you know we're like an hour away from the beach so I mean growing up I was I was definitely uh, very sporty I you know my family I wouldn't say they were very sporty or athletic but I think just naturally I was a little bit always more uh, interested in in sports so kind of my first love in a sport was was basketball that was I started playing basketball when I was in uh, middle school so maybe around gosh like nine or ten years old and I continued playing basketball throughout high school and I think one of someone that's had a really big kind of impact in in my love for just the outdoors was one of my aunts so one of my mom's sister she uh, her youngest sister she's uh, studied environmental science and so growing up, thanks to her, she would take me out to a lot of local trails and she would tell me, uh, you know, point out different trees and bugs and plants. And today she still she works in the nonprofit sector. So she still has like this huge love for the outdoors as well. So I think she had a big influence in kind of me becoming very outdoorsy and now a runner and, and all that stuff. When you think back to when you were a little girl, what did you think you'd be when you were like a, a grown up? Like, did you, what were your dreams? What were your ambitions? I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I always knew I wanted to start my own business. And I think that was primarily because I grew up around um, a lot of entrepreneurs. So like, I'm an only child, but I, you know, lived with my parents and uh, was really close or still am really close to my mom's side of the family. And a lot of them have started their own businesses. Like my dad, he's owned his own Mexican restaurant for the last 20 years. My mom, she used to own a couple of retail furniture stores. My aunt and uncle, they, they've owned a coffee catering business for the last 15 years and which also happened to be my first time job. So I just kind of being exposed to that at a really early age, I just somehow always knew I wanted to be able to start something and build something on my own. So yeah, I always definitely entrepreneurship was something I was always interested in. Yeah, definitely surrounded by loads of amazing role models. Talk to me a little bit more about your running. When did you start getting more into running or start taking running sort of more seriously? Funny enough, I, growing up, I used to hate running (laughs) because when I played basketball, we would condition before our season started and we would have to run a lot. And I just hated the idea of me having to run more than a mile because I think because someone was telling me to do it. <laughs> but, you know, when I, when I graduated high school, went on to college, I was no longer playing basketball. I wasn't, you know, in a sport and kind of being at a new university for the first time and not knowing anyone. I think at the time too, I was just really, really introverted. So I wasn't, I didn't really put myself out there. I was really, really shy. And, and so I was just thinking like, well, I need to do something, you know, like my life is kind of boring. I don't know what I want to do. Just really confused. And then I was like, huh, well, what can I do on my own? And that's when I thought of running. Um, I was like, well, I don't necessarily need to interact with a lot of people when it comes to running. I don't need to join a team. So why don't I try that? And funny enough, I, oh, so I got into running when, during my first year in college, but through running through, you know, signing up for some local running events, I not only ended up finding a love for the sport of running, but I also ended up finding a community. So that was, I mean, it's definitely had a huge impact on my life since. Let's talk about your love for running. Like, Because some people, they, you know, like you said, you know, you hated running initially. When did it all change for you? Was that a moment or one point, or was it more gradual than that? When did running start becoming, you know, a bigger part of your life? I've never been, you know, a very fast runner, so I'm not 
by any means a competitive runner or anything like that. I, I kind of just do it for the kind of mental benefits, the health benefits and all that stuff. But I think like from when I signed up to do my very first, um, I think it was like a 10 K, you know, in, in my local area in San Jose. And I did that completely alone, but I think just being there in that kind of environment with just people cheering you on, on the sidelines, just other runners, you know, staying on pace with other runners. There was just like bands that were on the sidelines. And I, I really loved the the energy and the environment that I experienced during that first event that I was like, oh, I need more. I, I want to do more. And then it just also became kind of like a little challenge for myself because I, I needed a challenge. I I wanted to just keep seeing like, how much farther can I keep running? You know, so it's like training for, for longer races, that races, that was kind of something that I, I also really enjoyed too, is just seeing how much more I could push my body to. Did you follow sort of quite a traditional path? So you did your 10K, did you go after like a half marathon next and then a marathon? Was that sort of part of your running journey? Yeah, well, actually I'm, I'm the process of training for uh, a marathon right now. So I haven't done a marathon yet, but exactly. So it's, been like a 10k I've done a couple half marathons uh, I had some like knee problems over the last year so I'm trying to kind of also train for my first marathon while also attending to my knee issues but yeah so that, that's kind of been been the the phase of it how's all the training going it's going good well actually even in in about two hours I'm actually going to go see a knee doctor so it's literally just at the beginning of it so First, I want to try and figure out what the heck is going on with my knee problems and, and then start putting together a plan. So I'm also going to be seeing like a, a physical therapist and really just investing time in, in making sure that I'm also taking care of my body. Because I think that's something that I've neglected in the past. And oh, my last half marathon that I did was so painful. <laughs> so after that, I was like, yeah, I need to really start investing into just making sure that I'm going to be doing these longer distances that I'm taking care of my body. You mentioned the running community. Tell me a bit more about the community. Have you got, is it more than one community? Are you a member of a running group? You know, was it through college? Did you meet more people through running? Yeah. I mean, some local communities, I actually ended up starting, you know, my own running group in in the area in San Jose. So that was, we haven't been meeting up sadly because of COVID but I can't wait till we meet up again. So but that's been really, really fun. And also there's a couple other local running groups too in the area that I'm a part of. And then also online communities, you know, I see so much value in, in like what online communities can bring. So of course there's a lot of great Facebook running groups, but one of the more recent communities that I joined is called the Running Industry Diversity Coalition. Um, so they're an incredible group coalition uh, community organization. Um, That's basically their whole mission is to bring together running brands, running retailers, and runners who represent uh, Black, Indigenous, people of color to work together to essentially increase diversity in the running industry. So I mentioned at the beginning that I'm the community lead of that group. And so I essentially helped them launch their own community platform. Um, So that's been another great community that I've joined within the last year or so. So that's running diversity. Yes, it's uh, RIDC for short. But yes, uh, running, running diversity on, on Instagram. The Running Industry Diversity Coalition. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. And so what you, you arrange events then, do you? Or you're like a, lun- a running lead. What's involved in that? I'm a community lead. So basically, um, I help launch their own community platform. Really what RIDC does is they kind of host a series of webinars, workshops, discussions to talk about, you know, certain issues to, you know, certain issues that the running industry faces around, you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And these webinars and workshops have been just incredibly valuable, but I actually approached uh, Allison Sear and Chris Lampin, the two leads of RIDC. And I said, Hey, everything you guys are doing is incredible, but I am part of a couple community communities online. And I would love to help the RIDC launch their own community platform. 
So, you know, to basically ha- continue these conversations online and share resources and whatnot. And so I joined about four months ago. And, you know, right now we have about a hundred or a little over a hundred people on the actual community platform. So that's been really, really fun just to kind of see all these awesome discussions happening. What have been some of the top discussions that have been had? Well, right now in the United States, there's over the last couple of weeks, one of the biggest things that's been going on is uh, these horrible hate crimes against the Asian community. So that's actually been one of the discussions we've been having as well, because we find that a lot of the race issues that happened as a whole, um, it also affects specific industries. So it's like, you know, the, the running and outdoor industry, like so many other industries, it lacks diversity. So, you know, it, it's really nice because we we can talk about these bigger social issues and then somehow tie it back to the sport of running. It, it's just really great to learn from other people and learn from their experiences. And so that's been one of the more recent discussions we've been having. So one of the things which is so important is, you know, representation, it's hearing different voices in this space. And for women out there who are maybe thinking, I don't fit in, I'm not a runner. What would your advice be to them? Yeah, that's a that's a really good question. Um, and it's a tough question too. I think at least speaking from my own community, I'm like I said, I'm I'm Mexican American and you know, like a lot of my relatives uh, haven't been necessarily active. I, I actually just was one of the first maybe people in my family that took up sports, uh, which obviously started as basketball. But it's funny because a lot of my relatives, they look at kind of my running and they're like, oh my gosh, you're running so much and you have knee issues. And, you know, like, why are you running more and more? Why do you want to put yourself through this pain? But I don't, I think there's kind of like, it's still a need for, um, more awareness and, and introductions to certain sports like running for underrepresented groups like, you know, Mexicans or just the Latin overall Latinx community. So I guess, yeah, that's actually, that's, that's a really good question. Like I said, that's something that I'm also trying to figure out too. And it sometimes just starts with just like inviting your friends who maybe aren't so active to a trail or you know, a good example is uh, my boyfriend. He has always been active too, but he wasn't a runner and he's still, he doesn't really consider himself to be a runner, but thanks to me, I kind of started dragging him along <laughs> during our, our weekend. Now we have weekend runs and uh, we, I just really like to go to new trails and, and all that. And my boyfriend's actually black. So, you know, so he's also maybe you can say like an underrepresented group in America And I think over time, like he's gotten more used to the whole idea of running. And that's been really fun to see. Another good example is his parents too. So my boyfriend and his family, they're actually originally from Georgia. And uh, when they came to California, they said that they had never been hiking before. And I just a couple of weeks ago, uh, you know, we all went hiking with his parents and it was my boyfriend said, you know, this is the first time my, my parents have gone hiking. And I was just like, wow, like, you know, to me, it's, it's so weird because I've grown up with like hiking and, and all these mountains and trails all my life. But, you know, I think it sometimes just starts with there, like inviting someone to go hike or someone to go on a, on a run or dragging another friend along. So yeah. A hundred percent. And especially like, you know, if people have never done it before, they need like, uh, or sometimes they need like an introduction or a friendly face to sort of encourage them, show them what it is that they're that they're doing. And also because then once they've done it and then they've had that experience and hopefully they'll think, right, let's go again. And then they'll invite yeah. their friends and that's how it expands. You um exactly. you, re- you recently or not recently, I think I think last year in 2020, you undertook on the 24 hour marathon challenge. Yeah. Do you just want to share a little bit more about your 24 hour marathon challenge, where the idea came from and how it evolved? And yeah, talk, talk us through the 24 hour marathon challenge. This is obviously all in the midst of the pandemic and we're all cooped up at home. And I saw this YouTube video, can't remember who, but someone 
is this youtuber is a runner Bo miles Bo miles, Bo miles yes, yes yes yeah i think he might have came up with anyways i watched his video and i was just totally in love with you know the journey the experience that that he shared and i i like putting myself through these difficult challenges whether it's physically or mentally and like i said i was just kind of seeking something uh, especially since we were all cooped up at home and so uh, it was the summer and I decided, you know what, I'm going to do this, this crazy challenge and see how it goes. But then I was like, in addition to just doing the challenge, I kind of want something that is going to motivate me a little bit more, right? Because just, you know, like it, if it's 3 a.m. and you're exhausted, I don't think there's no really incentive for you aside from the fact that you can say you did it. It's going to be really challenging to go run another mile at 3 a.m. So I just thought kind of as a way to push me a little bit more and make sure that I complete the entire challenge, I'm going to try and raise money for an organization. So I started you know, just sharing with my close friends and family and I started raising money, which all went towards the Equal Justice Initiative. And in addition to that, too, I kind of, you know, this was in the midst of a lot of the, you know, recent protests around the killing of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery. So this was in the summer, right at the peak of all that. And I wanted to just learn more about all these victims' stories. And so every single hour I dedicated, uh, or every mile I dedicated, every mile to a victim, you know, police brutality, violence. There's also another uh, epidemic in the country. It's called the missing murdered indigenous woman epidemic. And so I also heard stories about some of the victims from that. And that, you know, it was just such a, it was one of my favorite running experiences of all time. And definitely one of my favorite moments of the crazy 2020 that we had. And I might even do it again, I think this year. (laughs) Did you do much planning or preparation for it? Or is it just the case of, right, let's pick a day and let's (laughs) go for it? it? It was exactly that. And it was such a, like I said, at 3 a.m., oh my gosh, it was cold and I was exhausted. My eyes were just trying to (laughs) just stay shut. But yeah, I mean, I think it was just having some kind of knowing that I raised money and knowing that every mile was dedicated to someone. It just got me out there. And so it was it was such an amazing experience. Did you have any supporters with you? Was your boyfriend around? Did you have anybody else sort of joining in, doing a mile with you, sort of, you know, maybe on the hour, every hour? He he was there, actually. He showed up a little bit later in the evening um, and said he was going to run the entire uh, night with me. <laughs> but I think he was pretty exhausted, too. But no, yeah, I mean, yeah, he was there and friends and family on online because I kept sending little videos to my close friend group too and they were just cheering me on go Jasmine so it was just I I definitely did have a lot of supporters and you know even the people who donated I I didn't really do a lot of pushing out in terms of like trying to raise uh, money but I think I we ended up raising around like nine hundred dollars which was you know pretty good because I put it out there in less than a week so I definitely had a lot of support and and I was really, really thankful for that. Have you been involved with many other sort of virtual runs or virtual challenges? Have Have you done that sort of during lockdown and COVID and the pandemic? Well, yeah, I do still try and, and do some kind of like unique challenges. Uh, like I said earlier, something that's still that's different, that's going to still push me. So like I think in January, I did something. It was like a running 150 miles in January. So that was kind of a challenge for me. I signed up for that. So I'm still, I mean, I'm definitely still look, trying to look for some fun virtual runs that are a little bit different too. How's your motivation levels been for running? Like have they been, if they remain pretty steady, pretty constant? Have, have you sort of gone through a blip where it's just like you just haven't wanted to run or, or is running sort of helped you with your mental health and, and managing the stress of the pandemic? Right now, I, so I have the, the privilege to, first of all, I have the privilege to have a job. In addition to me trying to start my own business, I'm, I also have a job that, which is, you know, a privilege right now in this, especially in America with such a high unemployment rate. And I have even more of a privilege to be working from home. So that's thanks to that. I've actually feel a lot more healthier in, in terms of, aside from all the craziness going on in the world, um, you know, I feel like my mental health is better than ever. Because before I just felt 
living in the Bay Area, it's just traffic and uh, everyone's like working all the time. And, you know, I uh, was also in the midst of graduating too. So just I had these, this crazy schedule and wasn't really getting a lot of good sleep and struggling to even, you know, work out every day. And now, you know, I don't have a commute. <laughs> I'm living with my parents right now, so I'm saving money and I'm able to just, I, I've actually been more active than I was, um, you know, last year, the year before. So I think in that case, I'm a little bit luckier or more fortunate because I know that not everyone's situation experience in this last year or so has been the same, but yeah, I mean, I've definitely really, really seeked the outdoors and just running this this past year because it has been kind of like a a mental relief for me though you know you shared more at the beginning um your your passion for being an entrepreneur and how inspired you've been by your family and I know that you've started your own company up uh, Vessel Athletics and I'd love for you to share more about Vessel Athletics how the idea came about what it is what you do Vessel Athletics is a functional activewear brand for uh, runners and athletes and we're creating a product called the Hydro Shirt. So it's a, an activewear shirt that integrates a removable hydration reservoir. The whole idea around this product is creating a product that allows runners to seamlessly hydrate without, without the excess weight that a hydration backpack might bring or the sloshiness, the flimsiness that a backpack as well or one of those flimsy water belts have and without also the need to hold a water bottle in your hand. I started this uh, this whole product company out of, you know, kind of my own necessity, my own frustrations with finding a hydration product that I could easily carry comfortably and easily on my runs. So, you know, I'm sure everyone gets these, you know, when you're on a run and you get these crazy ideas, sometimes really good ideas. Well, in this case, you know, I was out on a run and I wasn't running with any, with no water during this particular run. And I just integrate one of those hydration packs inside of athletic wear shirts. Most runners already wear shirts to begin with. And from there on, I kind of just ran with the idea and I've been working on developing this product for the last several years now. It's so we haven't launched yet, but our hope is to finally launch later this year. So that's just been just such a fun, difficult, fun and difficult learning experience, just kind of navigating how to start a business and how to design a product that's never been invented before and yeah so many other other lessons too that I've learned along the way are you going to be doing that on uh, kickstarter yeah exactly actually um gonna be doing it on kickstarter right now we have a, a website so you know if there's anyone listening they can come to the website to learn a little bit more and they can even sign up to like uh, our email list which is where we'll be announcing when we launch on kickstarter oh it's so exciting and Jasmine, I'd love to know, where's the best place for people to find out more information about you, to follow along with Vessel Athletics? Where should they go? So they can go to the website, vesselathletics.com or uh, on our Instagram page as well. But if you you know want to connect with me directly, you can connect with me on Instagram. That's probably the best place. Uh, so it's at the Jazz Runs. I always love connecting with, with other runners. And if anyone has any thoughts on the product or wants to learn more, please do reach out. I'm, you know, currently uh, looking for some product testers as well in, in the United States. So uh, yeah, if, if anyone's interested in testing the product out too, and so you get some samples, that would be amazing. Well, fantastic. So all of our American listeners who want to do some testing and reviewing, you know, who to reach out and speak to. And Jazz, finally, I'd love for you just to I have a final words of advice for other women out there who maybe don't see themselves as a runner, but they know that they want to get running for their mental health, for their fitness. They just want to, you know, get, move their body more. What would be your top tips for new runners who are just starting out? Just get out there, you know, don't necessarily focus on the timing or the distance. You know, I'm starting to have a love hate relationship with Strava and all these tracking apps and, you know, even my fitness watch, because sometimes I'm just looking, Oh, how much, how fast am I running or how much have I ran already? Right. And it's not even about that. It's just getting out there. It's, it's not even about the distance or the time, your pace. It should be more just like, I'm taking care of my body, my mental well being, And, you know, this is, 
that's just kind of a start. I think a lot of people think that in order to be a runner, you have to be fast. And I'm certainly not fast. I hear a lot of people all the time say, oh, I'm not really a runner, but I run, you know, a couple of times a week. And I'm like, you're a totally a runner. So also start to call yourself a runner. And yeah, so I, I just, I think don't put too much pressure on yourself. That's really what I would say. 100%. Yeah. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. Absolutely. Jasmine, thank you so much for coming on to our podcast and sharing more about your running journey and the 24 hour running challenge and best of luck with your new product and the product launch. I'm sure it will be an absolute success. Thank you so much. Hey Tribe, I hope you enjoyed the episode with Jasmine. Everything that we have talked about today will be available in the show notes at toughgirlchallenges.com. My name is Sarah Williams. I'm the host of the Tough Girl podcast and the founder of Tough Girl Challenges, which is all about motivating and inspiring you while increasing the amount of female role models in the media. So today we've been talking about running and I have spoken to a lot of runners on the Tough Girl podcast, a whole variety of runners, from runners who've gone from the couch to running a marathon, to running ultra marathons, to running across countries like, um, like Anna McNeil, Enough, to running around countries to running through countries there are so many women who've done a whole variety of different running challenges and one of the things that I have started to do is to sort of group women to together and produce sort of extra social media posts and extra blog posts so they have been coming out over the past sort of couple of months um, and if you follow me on Instagram you'll probably see you know the artwork there's like four four images of the women put together there's their links to their social media a little bit of a bio about them and then a link to the podcast episode because I'm also very aware I know it's not that easy to see which women I've spoken to because the search function on the website isn't that great but it's just you know look it is what it is and I'm just doing my best to to share these names um, of these women out there there's also, you know, um, a section on runners over the age of 60. So obviously the lovely Rosie Swell Pope. There's Alison North. Actually, both of those women are actually now over 70 and both still running. There's Dr. Betty Holston-Smith as well, who is just, it's like a masterclass episode. Betty, Dr. Betty just talks maybe 40 minutes and it is truth bomb after truth bomb after truth bomb. We've also caught up with Loretta as well. Loretta Claraborn, who's a Special Olympic athlete. She's a world-class runner and motivational speaker. So there's a whole host of... Fr- phenomenal runners out there and I think one of the great things to do is when you listen to these episodes it's not about comparing yourself to these women but it's about picking and choosing the advice and the tips that they've used that have helped them in their running and applying it to your own running practices so there's lots of that information available if you follow me on my social media I mean they do go out on Facebook on quite a regular basis but unfortunately with Facebook I've got like maybe 3,000 plus followers and sometimes it will only reach 75 to 100 people each post so if you could engage with any of the tough girl content that would be amazing like it comment on it share it it really does make a massive amount of difference with the Facebook algorithm (laughs) and um, it also helps uh, other people to find out out about the Tough Girl podcast but if you're not that technical I totally get it the other amazing thing that you could do is using your voice tell one friend about the Tough Girl podcast if you're um if you're out at a running club or you're just sitting and chatting and somebody doesn't really know about podcasts, you know, show them, take their phone, show them how easy it is to download this incredible content, show them how they can listen to it and be inspired by it. And who knows, it could absolutely 100% change their life. A massive thank you again to all the patrons who are supporting the Tough Girl podcast. It really does make a massive difference having your belief and financial support. There are options via Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Tough Girl podcast to be a monthly patron or to be an annual patron you can do it in a whole variety of different current currencies it literally takes two minutes to sign up and would make the world of difference so if you could become a patron and support the work I do um, I would really really appreciate it but wherever you are whatever you are doing just give it your all give it 110% get after it go for it you are in charge of your life and you've got to take action to make it happen take care lots of love and I'll speak to you soon bye